Welcome everybody to Casting Classics. Very excited to be joined by Maddie Dye, um, who is responsible for this beautiful artwork. <laughs> that is our background today, which is exciting. My name is Tommy Moriello, uh, your host today, and we're excited to be chatting about the Glenn Rothis single cask release, a 36-year-old single cask. Uh, only 168 bottles released in the world, and each one will come with this beautiful box, which I know is most important to Mom, Mama Dukes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, I don't care about anything inside the box. She just wants the I box. I want that box. <laughs> uh, that also yeah. has an awesome NFT component to go along with it. Um, and with that NFT component, you could find all the lovely Easter eggs that are hidden behind this artwork. But 24? Allegedly 25. 25. Ah, Joe Girard, you've still got you've got one to find. I'll, yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it done. Yeah, today. But um, yeah, it's it, it's it's super excited to have you here. It's super excited to talk with you. Um, Casking Classics is all about celebrating creativity, right? And people that do things the right way and classic style professions. And whiskey making comes from passion and creativity, especially when you have the patience to wait 36 years to have a specific whiskey. Um, and we're trying to tell a story for that 36 years. Everything with the cast that it comes with, and the coopers that we have at the distillery, uh, the sherry season cask, all of that. But you have a different way of storytelling, right? You're a storyteller as well as an artist, yeah, correct? And it, it, it's cool to understand your knowledge, your commitment, your courage, and how you make that an opportunity. Um, and that all starts with being from New Zealand. That's where it all began. And coming on <laughs> over to the States to pursue this career. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So what, what, led, what led you to New York to, be, to become an artist and to, to live this New York lifestyle? And what were your expectations of what New York would be? It was like, it just felt like kind of the epicenter of like where you went to go try and be an adult. And it's like, it'll either make you or break. You know, just, like, it's true though. I mean, no, it's kind of is true though. Um, and I, yeah, I like had an internship at a little creative agency, like a few blocks from here. And I was just trying to, just trying to live. I was like in an apartment with like no heat and rats. And I was like, don't you rats want to go find somewhere with heat? It just was like a wild, I mean, talk about like expectations of New York. I thought I'd just wear scarves and get like seduced by Tom Hanks in my bookshop and instead I was like, you know, this is a hustle. Out here. Yeah, it totally is, is. it totally is. <laughs> but it also is crazy because it's a place where I guess it feels like there's so much going on and you can have a crack at a lot of different things and like, it feels like, you know, no one, if you just were like, I want to have a go at being a clown or something, everyone would be like, yeah, 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 there's a clown school a few blocks from here. Absolutely. They're, they're auditioning. There's 75 You'd be people great there. there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How is that possible? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. It just sort of feels like I, uh, it was a, the nice, a nice place to land and have no idea what I was doing and then think like with the like greatest breadth possible about like what what kind of things I could do. And like cartooning for the New Yorker turned out to be one of them. It's interesting because it's a world that like has been around for a minute. I mean, both of them, like the, like illustrated for the New Yorker, whiskey. So you have like these generations of like legends kind of, and then you come up as like a young rookie trying to make it. It's like, I don't know, something that kind of feels storied is like interesting to get into because you, you show up at places and there's someone who's like been doing it 50, 60 years and you're like, oh my God, like the longevity, the tradition, they're like, it's the same, I guess. It's, it's remarkable. I remember one of the first time when I went to Scotland to see the distilleries, it, you see distilleries in the States, right? I've been to bourbon distilleries, I've mm -hmm. been to rum distilleries, I've been to tequila distilleries. Seeing a Scottish whiskey distillery was a different animal. Yeah. And it's, you realize like, coming from the States, we're babies. Yeah, yeah, like, totally. There's nothing like the history that's out there, yeah, specifically yeah, yeah, yeah. the Glenrothes Distillery. And yeah. They've been doing it for a little Yeah, little yeah, bit. yeah. 1870. They've been cranking this out <laughs> since Jesus was a child. Yeah, totally. It's yeah. like crazy. It's he like, would serve that. At the he would serve that, totally, yeah. totally. <laughs> if only he had gone north, he would have really, <laughs> really been living. But it, 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 and with that, like that history and that culture of Scotland, seeing how you incorporated the two, right? Yeah. Like seeing how you brought 
Like, I love the Haggis hot dog stand. My favorite being though, because I swear that I will live and die in New York, is the sub, when you come out of the subway entrance and you have the graveyard there. Yeah. And, this, <laughs> exactly. and the cemetery being there, because I'm saying I'm dying in New York. That's, yeah. that's, that's me. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's so cool. And so how did, how did your mind work with that? How did your mind work in incorporating Scotland and New York? I mean, I, I kind of like the opportunity to like, so often that like, you combine two things and you have to find the best joke or the, I, I don't know, just kind of one moment. But with this, you're able to like riff on the same idea again and again and again. And like having spent time in both New York and Scotland, they're like great places to be an observer and like an outsider okay. because people like really live out loud. Like they're very themselves. I feel like in New York, everyone's just like, the way they're feeling is like immediately present and obvious to you. They'll be like yelling into their phone or like talking to you on the street about how they are. So you get a like strong sense of it. As soon as you wake up when you live in the city, you are running. Totally. Running, and I also running. feel like the minute you're on the street in New York, people are like, it, it's like you're open to having a conversation with someone. People just come up to you and be like, can I have a go on your skateboard or like whatever? Like they just start conversing with you in a in a way that you're just like, oh, this is my back, this is my front guard, this is the closest thing I have to outdoor space. So yeah. I'm just trying to live in this world. I don't know um, how to say this politely, but I already have a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, too many, mate. It'll just trying to have my morning cup of coffee. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. Totally. No, but it's it's true that New York stamina is is a beast, and I think yeah. that's why it's cool to have those outlets, right? Yeah. And, People that will go and look at a piece of art, that is your outlet. And we have so many awesome places to appreciate art in the city. Oh, um, it's amazing. Not just museums, but I mean, just go out and see some street art. Right? Yeah. Some graffiti is, is amazing. It's crazy. But, and it's cool to sit back and enjoy a nice dram. Yeah. It gets, it gets you into your zen. Right? Yeah. Like it's, we're having the Glen Roth as 18, which has become one of your My favorites. My favorite. And this is the one that you hide from your friends and yeah. you, you serve to your, you serve, drink with dad, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. I chuck him a can of PBR and I pull out my little... <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, but no, it, it definitely, it takes you out of that hustle, I think. Yeah. It takes you, you appreciate a dram like this because of the constant hustle that you're going. And that yeah. unattainable stamina that New Yorkers have oh come to know and love. Seriously, yeah. Um, what's your creative process behind? I know you said Tuesday is your day that you have this this style of art, but yeah. you, you also write and you have some other things. So yeah. how do you schedule yourself oh, out? Oh God. I just feel like whenever I, I focus on something, like something else slides, and then that sense of urgency that it's slipping, We'll just, I just feel like I'm constantly just moving from one thing to the other and never on top of any, everything. But like, it suits but by me. By doing so, you're on top of everything. Yeah, but here I am, <laughs> enjoying the, in the morning. You're doing so I must right. be doing, you're but doing yeah. Right. I mean, I feel like um, it suits my mind to have like a lot of things on the go. Like I, I enjoy being like, having ideas go in lots of different directions. And like, illustration is good because it can be as big or small as you want. And often you're just like shooting these little, little ideas in the world, just like these fleeting thoughts can become something. But like living off that alone is kind of like, it's like only snacking or something. So being able to get into meaty projects that take years also feels like the balance like suits me. Absolutely. And then I don't know, they complement each other. Like you, when you like create an illustration like this, you're trying to create like, like a moment that feels like it could expand beyond like in some world those two people could that could be like the opening scene of like a rom-com or something so what keeps you motivated throughout um i actually genuinely feel like i just enjoy the i enjoy the things i do i know that sounds like trite but like i used to work jobs where i was like I just felt like I would, I was like this old jaded, I was like 25 and being like, another day closer to retirement. You know, every day I walked in and just like, I'd be pitching on projects and being like, God, I hope I don't win them or whatever. So I feel like sometimes, I mean, it's like you drinking a whole lot of whiskeys to find the ones you love. It, like, I feel really lucky to have crafted a career based, like I'm just cobbling together the things I enjoy doing most. And like, I, I really, fundamentally enjoy what I'm doing and I'm motivated to create a life where people keep paying me to do it 
And so I, yeah. It's gonna really work if you enjoy it. Well, you know, it's funny because it also is, man. It's like relentless rejection. And like, sometimes you're just like, I don't have any ideas. But to me, it's like better than the alternative, which is like, like just like working on other people's good ideas that you're like, I would do it a little better. I'd do it a little different. So with taking on new projects, this was another first for you in going into the NFT world. Mm -hmm. And this was the first NFT that you created, correct? Yeah. So w yeah. How, how do you approach that? How do you, how do you look into it? Did you do research on NFTs? Did you just, were you unapologetically you, as you say? You, know, you just went into it and like, I'm gonna do me and we'll figure out how it is. How, I, how do you approach a piece of NFT art? I mean, I definitely went in like, I mean, if, we, if you wanna be candid about my unapologetic process of being like, I have some concerns about this. Some of them environmental, which were like, well received by your team, I yeah. feel like. Sustainability I mean, is huge. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's, and Edrington follows a certain set a certain ethos to ensure that we're not harming mm -hmm. the world that we're living in mm -hmm. right and um it, it, it's it's cool to take those and it's cool that they took they took the time to get into this world yeah. of nfts and yeah. not want to leave that heavy carbon footprint that yeah people are like okay bitcoin is using how much energy yeah 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 it? and for what yeah, yeah totally so to look into it and do it the right way was mm -hmm. cool and mark beckman is awesome and he is the expert on this and he was able to it seriously yeah, yeah which was cool yeah i mean it's funny because it's like you know the thing that like m motivates me is like the th like uh, the box was like just the th like i had the brief and the box were like the two things that like anchored me to this and um they it felt like I, I I was building a piece of art for from there, and it's like kind of amazing to see all the different applications of it. Like it's been muraled, you know. They like turned the little T-shirt into a real T-shirt. So it's like like a client often takes a piece of art that you make and they like run with it in a million directions. They'll like resell it on a shower curtain or whatever, and like it feels like NFTs were another avenue that people wanted to explore, and like you know. You, you just, you, I mean, you, you sort of like to some extent just kind of go with it. That's like the nature of working with other people. Um, yeah, it's like... It, <laughs> it's a different animal. It's a different it's animal a, it's and it's like, it's funny, I, I don't exactly know what to say about NFTs because like they took seriously the idea that they wanted it to be a piece of art and they wanted it to like look beautiful and be like something you wanted to own and not just something that people were telling you you wanted to own and you didn't ever look at it or appreciate it. Did you know what I mean? I, yeah, I feel exactly what you're saying. And it's going back to what you were saying, you do what you do because of your passion. You love what you do. Yeah. Right? Um, but you also know that you just gotta do it right. Yeah. And I think that, again, tying it back to whiskey, it's doing things the right way. Yeah. Like, Glen Rothes has not changed their operation of how they do. Like, the 100%, Malted barley, right? Sherry yeah. season cast. They do it. They do it right, and they're passionate about it. Mm -hmm. and that's what makes it last. Mm -hmm. So when you jump on something like, oh, I'm going to try this out. It's, no, I'm going I'm to do this. Yeah, it's a different. Yeah. It's a different animal. Totally. And it's, and it's funny because like they're craftspeople, and I feel like, like sometimes you can it can feel like you can get caught up in certain trends or whatever that distract you from the fact that like what matters and what is your craft is like your art or your whiskey and like you like continue to work on that and hone on that will always bring back the right kind of people and like I sometimes think like chasing down little trends or whatever can distract you from the idea that you're like trying to perfect one thing or something yeah. and I mean they so do that that it's like there's a difference between chasing and embracing yeah and to embrace it might take a little bit longer than chasing yeah like, let's just get it up there let's, we get a win on the column like, yeah no it, let's do it the right way yeah or I mean, like the right people I guess will come to you and be like we are doing this exciting thing and we thought of you and that's with Glenn Rothis with Mark yeah um, with yourself everyone came together knowing what each one's expertise was and produced a pretty awesome project. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it becomes that organic courage because it, it, it is courageous to put yourself out there, yeah. specifically as an artist. And I love the word artist because it can mean so many different things. Yeah, yeah. Um, from the stand comedians that you saw last night. Yeah, yeah, totally. um, to I'm people that are on television, it. the people that are anyone, like the creative yeah. mind. Creative minds are amazing because they're always striving for that. They're always looking. Yeah. And they're always trying to 
stretch. They had to keep an open mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think this piece shows that. There's so many cool things going on yeah. and you are embracing the rich history of both New York City and Scotland. Yeah. There's a lot more history in Scotland than yeah. there is in New York City, but I think that you really crushed it and you got you got the message out there of what the history of these two amazing places are. Uh -huh. So you clearly did your homework with that. What, what was your research like? Obviously you've been to both places, but what? Did, how did you get that story out there of the history of New York and Scotland in this piece? I mean, I was well briefed, <laughs> I'll say that. Like I got given like packets and packets of like photos. I mean, it felt cool to have stuff that was generated by like all sorts of teams. Like everyone involved in the process, I feel like gave a little clue of like, places they loved in New York, things they loved in Scotland, like details about the distillery. But I do feel like in general research, like maybe this is just because my mom like is a librarian, so she's like research heavy. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, 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 at, at my old high school, her old high school, <laughs> she's a local <laughs> librarian. But she, so she's always like to me, she's always like alarmed when I go into, veer into fictional territory from like, building off history, but it feels like when you do enough research, you can like play around in the world of it, kind of authentically, if that makes sense. Like yeah. if you have a strong sense of a place or a time or a history, it allows you to make up details about that world, I guess. You're in a field where passion is very important, right? Mm -hmm. and so where does your passion come from to be an artist? Like, mm. Why are you so passionate? Why do you love what you do? It's, it's obvious that you do and you say that you do. But yeah. Where does that passion come from? You know, like, I feel like come, I come from a big family in New Zealand. Like, my mum's the eldest of nine, and I got a lot of cousins. Awesome. And, like, my nana, I, I've just been reminded of this because I moved home to New Zealand a few months ago, but, like, they are just storytellers. Like, they are the funniest people ever. And I just, I, it's funny to me now when I'm in meetings and people are like, stories this, a, a voice is this, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know, because I was like competing with the like the greatest storytellers like growing up, I feel like, and I'm like the eighth funniest person in my family, and they're like, you make a living out of it? That's crazy to me, <laughs> like, what about me? They're like, when's my time? And I'm like, look, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. We can be a traveling family band, but like, I, the other thing is, is like when my Nana tells a story, she like, she like sometimes closes her eyes because she's like fully reliving it. She, she's got like an immersive, VR experience in her head and like it, it's just like she'll be cracking up or she'll be like literally in tears like and I feel like it kind of I don't know that's like my lineage it's is, a part of you yeah, yeah I, I feel like and it kind of like and just kind of like making up stories and wanting to entertain well I don't know yeah it just feels like she, she's also a painter and stuff but she just does it for, for her local game. church, <laughs> literally just loads of photos of her paintings of her grandchildren. That's we awesome. write our names on the back so that we've all got, yeah, we're lined up to receive them. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's sick. And so I just feel like, I, I feel like it's a joke that I kind of made it my job when they're all just like humbly doing it for the love of it. And I'm out here just like, yeah, peddling our, my, our family wares. But I think that's where it comes from. And just to close on this unapologetic approach, yeah. um, I love your style. I love everything about how you, I, how you showcase yourself, both with your art and just personally. It's awesome. Um, what advice would you have for aspiring artists, for someone that wants to tell their own story through some form of art? What, what would you tell to that person? I mean, I guess I would say like make, like make it. But like write it or start drawing it or something because I sometimes feel like it's easy in to feel like that you got a network or like the like put the connections before the let's say putting the cart before the horse you know yeah. like when you get that meeting with someone or you DM them on Instagram and they DM you back or what I'm not suggesting that's a good way to get jobs but it did work it on work. one occasion yeah, yeah. It might work <laughs> but um it feels like they'll just be like, okay, so what do you, what do you do? Or like, and if you've 
I feel like you're having a body of work that you've just been quietly chipping away at is kind of the best way. And it feels like it hurts, you know, to be like, oh, what, I have to actually write the thing or like draw it? But it, it does help to have it. And then I guess it's just like try things. Like the, the other thing that's like got me far in life is taking night classes after work. I did some at the School of Visual Arts. Like I did some at City Lit in um, City Lit. Is that what it's called in London? And okay. like they just give you little tasters of like of all the different ways you can put stuff out there. And it, it's sometimes surprising. And you just yeah. I don't know. I just was like, just, I just try it out. Pursue. Yeah. Pursue is the best. Yeah. Thing. Before yeah. you start hitting up people, being like, "Can I get a drink with you?" Because they'll just want to know whether or not you you can do it. I guess. Substance again. We'll go Substance. Back. You need something to show when you're having You kind of do. You kind of do. The first step is always like, the toughest step, right? Of it like really is. Making the making the commitment to put forward that effort and, and get it done. Yeah, and maybe you hate it. You know what I mean? Like maybe you like like you quit your job to become a something, and then you're like, oh, this was a bad choice. Yeah, <laughs> I hate this. Yeah. So I I'm always just sort of like just give it a crack for a while. Awesome. And the same so as I said, to people like, oh, hey, how, do, how do we how do we become a whiskey person? So we'll drink more whiskey. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, Get it's to not, know yeah. it. Yeah. Understand it. Talk to people. Yeah, you know, yeah, Join yeah. a group. Yeah, you know, yeah. Do, do your homework, do your research, and you become a whiskey person. Yeah. It's, there isn't. Like, it just sneaks up on yeah, you. There's no whiskey sommelier program or anything like that. It's just going out there, talking Pure. to really cool whiskey people, yeah. finding someone like Alistar. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Learning from the whiskey. greats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule to <laughs> sit down and, and speak welcome. with us and uh, walk us through who you are and the person behind the artwork, you know, and giving us a breakdown on what it is. It's it's super, super exciting to have this piece. Um, again, 168 bottles in the entire world. The NFT component along with it. With the NFT, you'll be able to find some really fun things about the Glen Rothis brand. Uh, get brought into and have that social NFT component, you know, maybe hang out with the two of us and drink some rare whiskey, you know, just. What more could you want? Yeah, it's, that's gonna sell the NFT more than anything Yeah, else. totally. But um, thank you, again, just thank you so much. And yeah, look, at, look after us, we'll be on Reserve Bar. Uh, we will be in the Metro New York area, obviously, so seek out the bottle, get involved in it. It's super fun, it's super different. It's one of the coolest bottles and by far the coolest package as a New Yorker. I could say that I absolutely love this package and the, the way the artwork came together. And the whiskey's not bad either on top of mm. all that. It's, it's not just drinking marketing as we said before. Yeah. We had the pleasure of sipping this last night with Matthew Wozniak. He walked us through it and it's a lovely dram. So not only is it a beautiful package, but it's a beautiful whiskey. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Me too, I endorse all that. <laughs> <laughs>